This story follows the life of a guy who was greatly despised but in the end he is the one who comes out on top. The guy's name is Tigervermud but I'll call him Tiger. Well at the beginning of the story this archer was fighting a lost war. Upon seeing a war maiden he decides to try to kill her to ensure that his friends can retreat. Unfortunately these female warriors are very powerful. He ends up being captured by the enemy. In a dream of the main character it is revealed that he was despised and called poor by other nobles and he was also one of the men summoned by the king. Not only that but guys keep calling him a coward for using a bow and arrow. Out of nowhere, Tiger is woken up from his dream. Then the woman who woke him up says that Eleonora wants to talk to him. To return him to her kingdom, Eleonora charged an absurd amount to Tigre's followers. If no one pays the ransom, the man with red hair will be her property. After saying this, the war maiden asks him to demonstrate his skill to everyone. At the time of doing this, Tigre starts to make brutal mistakes and this was only happening because the arc they gave him was horrible. Out of nowhere, a man tries to kill Eleonora, but she defends herself without even moving. So that the rebel can be captured alive, the tiger goes there and hits the guy's foot with a bad bow and from an absurd distance. The next day, Eleonora apologizes for giving him a horrible bow to shoot. When Tigre asks why she asked him to show off his skills, the maiden says she fell in love with his bow skills. She then comments on the war, saying that with only 5,000 soldiers, her army devastated the 25,000 soldiers sent by the enemy. The war maiden expected a brutal battle, but the tiger's side was decimated in just half a day. Disappointed, she continued massacring her enemies until she found the main character. Upon seeing the man alone trying to kill her coldly and and without hesitation, Eleonora was happy and captured him. After saying all this, the woman tries to make the tiger become her servant, but the main character refuses and says that he has a land to rule. That said, a few days pass and the tiger started to be respected for his skills. During the night, a servant of the tiger ends up being captured. The elder tells the main character that an army of 3,000 soldiers are marching to attack the lands that the tiger rules. Upon discovering this, the main character goes to the exit and asks Eleonor to let him pass. However, the woman asks how the tiger intends to fight against 3,000 soldiers alone and the answer to that does not exist. The guy bows down and asks Eleonore to lend him her strength. The maiden agrees to do so, but all the lands she defends will become hers. Tigre accepts as long as his people are treated with respect and equality. Before going into battle, Eleonore and her faithful companion try to fix Tigre's hair, but it doesn't work. They go to battle. The man who is commanding the attack on the lands of Tigre sent this giant army with the intention of devastating the people and obtaining the lands for himself. When the soldiers arrive in the lands of Alsace, they start to loot everything. So as the people retreat, the Zion guy, that nobleman who is angry with the main character, decides to visit the tiger's mansion to destroy it. Inside the mansion, a maid named Tita was alone waiting for her master. Out of nowhere Zion appears in the mansion destroying everything. Upon seeing the maid, he chases her and just as the crazy man was going to do something bad to the girl, Tiger shoots him in the hand. To escape the man the maid jumps from the top floor of the mansion and Tiger jumps to save her. Luckily, Eleanor used her skill with the wind to not let the two get hurt. Out of nowhere a man tries to shoot Tita with an arrow. At that moment the tiger holds the arrow with his hand and returns the arrow hitting the enemy. He shot this arrow with so much anger that his bow ended up breaking. Fortunately, Tita was holding a dark and powerful bow that the tiger received but never used because it was a family heirloom. After their advance, 300 enemy soldiers ended up being shot down and Zion managed to escape. At a table, Tiger tells Eleonore where the enemies will probably gather. In the middle of this meeting, Tita appears and asks what Tigre's Eleonore is. The woman says she owns him and the guy agrees. The poor maid is sad but promises not to give up on her master. Before heading to the battle, Battlefield, the tiger agrees to prepare some traps for the enemies. When the battle begins, the war maiden uses her power to stop arrows and devastate enemies, and the tiger only hits those quality bullets. Out of nowhere the enemies place a dragon on the battlefield. Zion appears all happy and thinks he has a dragon by his side. The war maiden comes face to face with the dragon and invokes its power. Then with just one powerful blow, Eleonore splits the dragon in two. At this moment, even the war maiden soldiers are surprised. She says that she has never used this move against humans, as it is too strong. After losing their first First dragon, the enemies begin to retreat. Eleonore's servant appears, putting her traps into action. With the battle already decided, the tiger tells Zion to surrender. At that moment, the disgusting noble calls the tiger to a duel, and the main character obviously accepts. Normally, the disadvantage should be on Tiger, as he has a bow and the enemy has a resistant shield, but the main character shoots several arrows in the same place and manages to break through Zion's shield. Seeing their commander losing, the soldiers run to save him, at which point Zion takes the opportunity to climb onto the dragon and retreat. Upon seeing the guy running away, the dark bow communicates with the main character, telling him to hit the dragon. Without even thinking much about it, the tiger just gives his best shot and hits the dragon with a demonic bullet. Then, Eleonore shouts victory and the enemy soldiers with no motivation to fight end up surrendering. After carrying out these feats, Eleonora leaves Tigre in the care of her subordinate and goes off to do other things. In this way, the tiger achieved peace in his kingdom, but all of this is temporary, as the person in charge of the entire invasion is still alive planning his revenge. This time, the enemy only intends to attack the tiger's 
Eleanor's territory when he obtains the power of a war maiden. While Tigre was doing some things in his land, Eleonora went to the king to explain why she had entered into a war of a thousand soldiers against three thousand. In response, the white-haired woman says that she was hired by the lord of those lands to do this in the name of peace. At that moment the king didn't like the motivation behind all this, but a blonde woman named Safi appeared and managed to convince the king not to punish Eleonora. Then Eleonora has a private conversation with Safi. Apparently the blonde is also a war maiden. In this meeting, the two talk about one or another war maiden who could end up becoming their enemies. While the women were planning, the tiger was being grabbed by Tita. Upon returning to his home, the main character comes across a great friend of his picking a fight with Eleonora's servant, Lim Alicia, a horrible name by the way. Tigre resolves the problem between the two. Then with everyone happy, the main character says he will attack Duke Thenardier, who in this case is the man who ordered the attack on him. To get a bigger army, the tiger goes in search of allies. After gaining several allies, the main character meets Eleonora again. During a conversation the tiger explains his plans to her. She says that their only current obstacle is a war maiden who wears blue clothes and has a body withered and likes to ally with enemies. At that exact moment, the war maiden appears and introduces herself to the tiger as Ludmila. Then the girl invites the tiger to talk. With that said, everyone leaves on horseback and Ludmila tells Tigre that the enemy he wants to fight with is too strong. After she says this, some assassins ambush the main characters to try to kill the tiger. Fortunately, everything was resolved with Ludmila using the power of her ice spear. In this ambush, the girl with the horrible name was bitten by a snake. Everyone runs out to take her to a doctor. In the following episode Lim Alicia was already cured. Now Eleonora was planning to reward the tiger for removing the poison from her so quickly. Then Tiger enters the same bathroom as Ludmila and ends up being beaten. A while later, he discovers that he missed the bathroom because of Eleonore and Lim Alicia. On that same trip Tigre treats Ludmila too well and Eleonore ends up getting jealous. Even knowing that the main character is a good guy, Ludmila still intends to be against him. She ended up joining the army and going against the main characters. The first meeting of the two armies ended in a draw. During the night, Elin says that she will defeat Ludmila in the next meeting. The next day, Ludmila retreats with her army to a fort in an unknown location. Thus the stalemate between the two armies continues. In a conversation with Tigre and Lim Alicia, Elin says that in the next battle, she will activate all possible powers and devastate everything. That night, Tigre comes up with a plan to make everything work out, but this was not revealed at that time. The next day he goes out disguised as a bear to do something. After three days of walking, his food runs out. When he sees an animal, he shoots it with an arrow to use it to eat. At that moment Ludmila hits an animal arrow at the same time as him. Since the girl didn't recognize him, he continued to maintain his disguise while standing next to her. Ludmila ends up feeling so comfortable next to him that during a blizzard, the girl ends up opening up and telling her depressing stories. When the girl leaves, the tiger follows her trail and ends up finding the hidden fort where she was. With the path found, the main character takes Elin and some soldiers to the fort and Elin sets out to destroy the entrance using a powerful blow. Unfortunately, her first blow ends up not being enough for that. When Elin was going to be hit by arrows from the soldiers who returned her blow, Tigre appears and saves her. To break through the gate, Tiger asks Elin's sword to lend him its power. The sword responds to his call. The two combine their powers and manage to destroy the gate. Once this is done, they both set out to devastate the enemy army. When invading the fort, Ludmila appears to fight and so the two war maidens end up fighting violently. Out of nowhere an assassin tries to kill one of the two maidens, but the tiger hits him before he can do anything. When looking at the main character again, Ludmila realizes that he is the man wearing the bear carcass. After that, Ludmila slaps Tigre and then decides to remain neutral in the war that is to come. However, the enemy has already prepared to make up for the lack of a war maiden, adding the strongest knight to help them. A month has passed since Tigre faced Ludmila, and now he marches with 5,000 soldiers to finally fight against the guy who tried to destroy his lands. Along the way, the Tiger army stops to rest and also visit cities to replenish supplies. In one of these things about entering cities, Tigre ends up meeting Safi. After the maiden falls on top of the man, Elin appears and becomes angry and jealous. A while later, this time wearing clothes, Safi introduces herself as one of the war maidens. According to the horse, I mean Lorona, she was sent as an emissary of the king. According to Safi, when she went to meet the king of the Brune Empire, which in this case is Tigre should serve and be part of, the king's guy didn't find her. The only thing she found out was that now the tiger is considered a traitor to the Brune Empire. During the night, the two maidens present talk and come to the conclusion that none of the other maidens will get involved in this war. The next day the war finally begins with the enemies being commanded by Roland, the most powerful knight in the empire. To prevent the enemy captain from being defeated, Elin went to fight him. Unfortunately the guy is more skilled and stronger than her. The only way for her to win is to use the power of her sword. Out of nowhere the tiger appears to save Elin from a difficult situation. Somehow he manages to save her and knock down Roland's horse with an arrow. However, the enemy almost tore the main character in two. At that moment Safi appears and tells Elin to move on. Having said that, the blonde maiden activates the power of her staff and creates a barrier to prevent the soldiers from passing. Roland passes through the woman's barrier using his sword.
sword and then tries to defeat her but Safi just disappears out of nowhere. Then Roland stops and remembers the time when he tried to see the king but the man the tiger is facing stopped him saying that the king was sick and couldn't see anyone. Roland doesn't believe in anyone. He wants to defeat the tiger quickly and try to talk to his king. With the arrival of new allies Roland had to retreat. During the night Elan goes to where the tiger was resting and tells the sleeping guy that she will command his army in his place. On the same night Roland discovers that Duke Thenardier attacked Tigre's territory with the intention of invading. Even with many doubts in his mind the most powerful knight decides to continue fighting as soldiers from an enemy empire are stepping on the territory which he defends. The next day the tiger wakes up and feels his trefoil bow guiding him somewhere. He goes to the location and finds some ruins. There the goddess of darkness and night communicates with him through Tita and performs a test with it. After the tiger passes the test he obtains a part of the goddess's power. On the other side of the screen the two war maidens were working as a team to defeat Roland even using their powers against him yet the man remained standing. Out of nowhere Tigre appears and after a small attempt at conversation that didn't go very well even though his heart is full of doubts Roland prepares to attack. Tigre launches his demonic bullet now with the power of darkness he didn't eliminate the Roland with that but the shot was powerful enough to prevent the man from moving. Once this is done the main character side wins this stage but they still need to defeat the bad guy behind it all. Sometime after the end of this battle Roland decides to try to talk to his king in person. Unfortunately Elin will have to leave the tiger aside taking her soldiers with her as a sick war maiden friend of hers is under attack by another maiden she will defend her friend. Tigre accepts this happily and wishes her good luck. Meanwhile in the king's castle Roland was caught in a trap and couldn't even see the king. After Safi also leaves Bald informs Tigre that a thousand Elin soldiers are left to support him. Inside the king's castle, Thenardier and an elderly scoundrel were arguing, because an army from a country that wears red clothes is invading the Brune Empire. First they will go over the Tigris and then they will reach where they are. When the tiger discovers this, he goes ahead and goes to this battlefield with his men. When evaluating the enemy army the main character decides to save the people they use as slaves. Nearby, he sees a girl running away from several pursuers. He saves her and takes her with him to a safe place. The enemies in red armor discover someone attacking them and send part of their army to defeat them. But they are deceived by an illusion that the tiger made using empty armor collected from so many battles so most of them end up being crushed. The next day, the tiger appears with his army positioned in three different points. Then he tries to talk to the enemy commander but the man underestimates him because in the Bruneian Empire archers are despised and treated as cowards. When the guy sends his warriors attack, the tiger hits the enemy's head with an arrow. Normally no arrow would travel such a distance but the tiger manages to do it perfectly without even using his power. After killing the enemy commander, their soldiers destabilize and Tigre ends up forcing most of them to retreat. With this, all the slaves were saved and of the 20,000 soldiers in red, 5,000 of them were killed. But this is just the beginning, as these people in red intend to send more troops. The next day while retreating, they are attacked by more old soldiers. This time without any trickery prepared, they would all get screwed. The tiger's luck was that Ludmila appeared with her men to help him. In the following episode, the war maiden with health problems receives a visit from Elan. During the conversation with the maiden named Alexandra, Elan tells some stories about the tiger and says that she was focusing on helping him. On the other side of the screen, Ludmila was negotiating with the tiger. As the man has nothing to give her as payment, the blue-haired maiden decides to help him to find out more about the power he used to break through the gate of the tiger. Strong of her, not only that, but the woman wants him to owe her a favor. The next day, Elin leaves to face a maiden called Elisaveta, a horrible name by the way, so I'm going to call her Liza until the end of the story. With the two armies facing each other, their battle maidens run to face each other. During the battle the two talk a lot and decide to declare a draw, and Elin only accepted this as she wants to help the tiger. On the other side of the screen, Ludmila comes up with a plan to defeat the absurd amount of soldiers wearing red clothes. Basically she wants Tiger to use his powerful arrow to defeat the enemy commander so everything would be resolved easily. The next day as snow began to fall, the two armies were already moving. The battle has barely started and Tigre is already attracting Ludmila's attention with his skills. After defeating thousands of soldiers, fatigue began to set in and they began to suffer many casualties. Out of nowhere, some extras appear to help the Tiger, bringing together these three different commanders. The number of soldiers under the main character's orders multiplies. With that, the commander of the army in red decided to retreat so as not to end up being surprised by more reinforcements joining the Tigre. After receiving the report from other troops, the bearded commander of the red army decided to retreat to maintain his fame and image, so in order not to be seen as a loser, he decided to praise the main character and call him a hero who prevented them from taking over the Empire Broom. During the night, Tiger finds out about this from a messenger from the red army, after which he ends up falling asleep while talking to Ludmila, at which point the girl takes the opportunity to sleep with him. In the morning, Ludmila feels Elan's presence arriving, the girl acts evil and clings to the tiger. During the night, Tigre apologizes to Elan for letting several of her soldiers die. The woman doesn't say anything to comfort him, she just takes his hand and stays there with the guy until the episode ends. When the next episode
episode begins, we see the tiger sleeping and an unknown war maiden entering his room, but the sleeping tiger defends itself, happy the woman opens a portal and retreats. A while later, the tiger feels that he touched something soft, but he doesn't remember what it was. Out of nowhere that blonde girl that the tiger saved and fed appears and introduces himself as Prince Regnus. To prove that this is true, he tells the tiger that they played together when they were little and the main character ends up remembering. The prince is actually a princess, but she pretends to be a man to avoid problems. They could solve all the problems by talking to the king, but no one lets anyone get close to him. At this meeting, the princess suggests that they go to a city called Artesium. There is an underground sanctuary and the tiger agrees to go to that place. Meanwhile, Duke Thenardier had gathered several dragons to use against the story's protagonist. On the other side of the screen, Sophie was ordered to make Elon stop fighting in an empire that is not hers, and Blondie accepts the king's orders. Before the tiger arrived in the city, the duke discovered this, so he went there and burned the entire city. Still, the main character decided to go there. On the way, the Tigre's army finally faces Thenardier's army. The first phase of the battle ends with both retreating, because on one side the enemy has dragons and on the other side there are two war maidens. When the two armies fight again, the two war maidens after much suffering managed to defeat the dragons, they were beaten and dirty, but the partnership between the two worked. That day the battle did not end, but the advantage now belongs to the army of Tigre. The next day, the main character has a luxurious breakfast, as several people are selling food at a low price to help his army. As they are already close to the city, they decide to look for an entrance to go to this sanctuary. Following the path that the princess indicated, they arrive at an underground tunnel. After walking a long way, they come across Duke Thenardier. At that moment Elon passes several enemies and runs straight to finish off the kill on the guy who only caused problems for Tigre. Then the entire tunnel starts to collapse and everyone starts to retreat. When the tiger was trying to do the same, a very strong guy was holding him back. When the guy was going to kill the main character, an elderly man who serves him sacrificed himself to save him. After the landslide, the tiger wakes up in time to see the elderly man dying. To get out of the place where they were trapped by rocks, tiger throws a demonic bullet into the air. When she sees his power in the sky, Elon runs to help him. Due to the death of his faithful follower, Tigre ended up becoming more depressed than anything. In the middle of the night, the tiger's trefoil bow congratulated him on mastering his power, but the tiger could only think about the old man who died. Worried about Tigre, Elon goes there and has a chat with him. Thanks to the woman, the main character is excited to end this war once and for all. The next day a crazy man who looks like a bearded potato appears and says that the king of the Brune Empire has awakened. Then the man asks what the tiger intends to do, and the main character responds by saying that he will end Duke Thenardier. Soon after, the war between the two lords begins. In crushing Thenardier's poorly organized army, the tiger comes face to face with Thenardier, the famous father of that nobleman named Zion. Very angry, tiger begins to accumulate his power to devastate the enemy, but Elon punches him and tells him not to use his power that way. Tigre goes one-on-one -on -one with just an arrow against the guy. Thenardier tries to cut the arrow, but he gets a balloon on his head, he died in a stupid way like his son. With the war finally over, the main character is forced to put on noble clothes and fix his hair to celebrate his victory with the king's daughter. During the night, the main characters finally get to see the king of Brune. The guy's situation was terrible, but he was aware that his daughter and the kingdom were saved thanks to the tiger. The guy asks what the red-haired man wants. In the end, the tiger gets some lands for the neighboring empire and a noble title above everything and everyone, except the king. A few days later the king died and the tiger continued living his peaceful life, but it is said that the man who receives the title he received always ends up taking the king's place. Well, the anime ended with all the war maidens interested in Tigre, but the anime didn't last long enough for you to see him choosing Elon.